All right. <sighs> We're going to try to draw in front of a camera while recording. Well, not in front of a camera, but with my voice. I don't know why Photoshop won't remember to keep my layer tab open. <clears throat> Alright, so I don't know what I'm going to draw, but we're going to try. It's gonna, not going to be this big, though. I'm working at 400. Alright, there we go. Actually, that's the angle I'm always using. Whatever. I guess we're going with it for now. So I don't sketch like most people. I My lines are really hairy and unconfident. It's gotten to the point where that's how I draw, even if I'm feeling confident. So, I don't know. It's not great, but... I've been seeing a lot of art with really, really exaggerated proportions. And I love that. I just don't do enough of it. This should come out a little bit more. Hmm. So I've seen art where the entire torso is the same size as the head. And also, I want really big objects or something coming off the head. Whenever I draw characters that have hair, it's like the hair has no volume to it. And whenever I see other art, it like comes all the way out here. It's crazy. I really like other people's hair shapes. I don't have a great sense of what makes good hair shape. I just don't. But that's why we're doing this, right? Kind of want a one-sided thing going on here. So they say to pull from the top. Like this. That's what they say. I don't like this, though. There we go. There's that freaking thing. This hair in the beginning or on the top of the head has a name. I can't remember right now. So I want the ears to be bigger than the head. I don't know if that's going to work. So I want the torso to be the same ish height. And I have no idea what pose I'm doing either. Oh, no, 
don't do is fair. Everything a blur. And the fast night to the moon. Ugh. I just don't understand how people get really good shapes with the hair. Maybe they just have a plan going in, or... I don't know. Like, I don't have a good system for doing it. It's a lot of trial and error. I guess you could count this as a short stack. So this knee should be higher. I think. I could be wrong. It could be the opposite. <laughs> What is she wearing, though? I don't know. I want the shoes, legs to be really, really big. Change the brush tip tape. Oh, sorry, the brush tip shape. This part's a little easier. I want to do my eraser too. I rarely draw with just a regular circle anyway. I kind of like sort of like this brush or an oval at an angle. It makes for interesting shapes to happen accidentally. I like to draw the eyes big because even if you don't end up with, so see, see this oval right here? That's how I draw my eyes because you're essentially just drawing the, the actual eyeball and then it kind of does this, um, this part for you, like where the eyelid has a fold, if you do that. Oops, mine's a little um, off. Actually, this might need to go over here, like that. So anyway, sort of a slanted T shape, but it depends on the character. And I like to get a little detailed with the face early on because it's nicer to look at while you're debating everything else in the drawing. So it keeps me going like, you have to finish this because the face looks good. Okay. So that's what we got so far. It's not very dynamic, though. So, actually, I think these ears should go the opposite way. So 
So I want to keep this. I'm just using a little bit of smoothing right now because I'm sketching. Um, I could have it as zero, I just don't. I don't turn on smoothing until I um, start doing clean line art. So I don't know what ear shapes to use here. I don't know what species this person is. I think this ear needs to go slightly more up. There we go. Can show a little bit of the fluff coming out here. I'm not good at fluff either, so don't take it from me. It's supposed to be fluff. Now this composition is kind of wonky because this hair is not in a good place. You can just draw a line around it, move it. I'm actually going to transform a little bit. There we go. If you're not using a ton of hotkeys while you do this, like you're going slower than you can go. Hotkeys are great. This is just a huge mess. That's too symmetrical. We're not keeping that. I just don't know how to do hair, man. I'm, I don't know. It's just all trial and error for me. This is sort of a huge, chunky shoe.
Yeah, that's too symmetrical for me. I want the arms doing different things. I don't even know what the other one should be doing, though. She's eating a hot dog. That's a joke. <clears throat> so now I'm going to make her smaller so I can use the space a little bit better. Uh, well, I don't usually record myself talking. I usually don't record myself drawing anyway. I have to be able to feel like I'm not being watched, even though I'm not drawing like stupid, stupid stuff or perverted stuff, or you would want some privacy. So I don't know what kind of shirt she's wearing or anything. Since it looks like a shirt, 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 t-shirt type of shirt, might as well just keep with that. Um, there we go. That doesn't look right. <clears throat> Maybe a little simpler. Yeah, a little simpler works. Something, one of these feet has got to change. Maybe this arm too. Well, whenever I have this problem, I'm about to take a risk and change something major. I can just make a copy of the layer. It's a super easy way to keep your speed and confidence up. So, right now I'm going to move this ear a little bit. This way. Okay. So if I'm doing this type of motion, like this is such a weird <laughs> thing I'm doing here. Let's see if I can save it. Control X, Shift Control V. That's a little better. Keep that. What the hell? Okay. Combine layers again. I 
I find it's easier to be like dynamic when you draw small. I feel like I've done this before. All right, this arm's got to change. And these legs. I'm not going to push them all the way back, though. I'm going to leave them there a little bit. Maybe she has like a cami pose. I forget which martial art does. Um, these poses. Oh, it's huge. But she's got to look light on her feet. Right now, she doesn't. Actually, didn't I say I wanted to go bigger? Bigger features? Like, I've seen some pretty huge mechanical fists. This has got to change. This is what happens when you don't practice. I don't know about that. That doesn't look right. That looks a little better. So this needs to go over here a little bit. This fist needs to be a lot bigger. This does not need to be defined right now. It's dependent on where I put the hands. Bigger, Matt. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Big fists. As big as the head. Ugh, it just looks awful. Frick. This is what happens when you don't plan out a pose and you're just winging it. This isn't bad. Shoes can be like as big as the head. Maybe I'll just have this arm kind of hang down or maybe even back and just focus on this arm.
Her arm is not that long. Okay. Her hand can be big, but the arms can't be really long. Otherwise, it looks weird. There we go. We've got an idea now. It's still pretty long, but that can be fixed. Like this. I guess that's where I'm saying the elbow area is. So she can be holding something. Fingers too big. This is right where the thumb happens. The thumb is even a little too big, but I want it big right now. Okay, so there we have a hand. I think we might actually stick with this, even though it makes very little sense. Not every picture has to be a masterpiece. Oh, good God. That finger looked weird. This finger probably looks weird, too. I'm 
just going for fun shapes, not accurate shapes. So, if you want to pick apart the anatomy, go for it. It's not supposed to be super anatomically correct. This needs to be like this. Okay, there we go. Alright, I really want to put her other hand up by her face. So, I'll get rid of this right here. I like this belly button placement. I want to keep that. I like this hip line right here. I think it looks kind of accurate. Hmm, I don't know about that button though. It should be over here. There we go. Maybe just go with my gut when it comes to Alright, so hand next to her face. We gotta do that. Can always do this on a new layer. I guess that works for me. Now I gotta figure out how the arm bends. Maybe like this. That looks so weird. Oh. Maybe she should have her shoulder a little bit up more. I guess that'll work. All right.
leg looks weird. His knee's probably wrong. And oh, we need a big ass tail. And also, I don't like the curve of this ear. Here we go. She shouldn't have too much hair coming out of this side. Should be coming out this way. And this shape doesn't fit. Sorry. It's gone forever. This shape I'm barely just barely not gonna change. But I do want big, big, big head shape with big ears. I want to do a little fork at the end there. Something's wrong with our legs. Actually, what I think I might do with the hair is sometimes I do it um, by making the flats for the hair. That's not going to work. not good to do mouth with a huge brush. There we go. That's the feeling I wanted. Actually, I could just flip it. Flip canvas. Well, I have her wearing pants, don't I? Maybe she shouldn't be wearing pants. Just show the leg. I always like to show that the like, skin is being like pulled tight. Or like, the clothing is actually having an effect on the wearer. So her shirt looks way thicker. There we go. It's too much. So, what do you guys think I should do about these legs? Or the hair? The only reason I flipped the canvas was so I could do this eyeball. 
That's what it's like to have ADHD. You're always getting distracted by something that you're not supposed to be doing. So it needs to go up like this, down, and then the eyelash comes up like this. There we go. guess this would... I need to push all this nonsense back. I'm just going to erase right there. And I'll go back in and redo. Her shoulder needs to be visible over here. There. Alright, we're going to save, and then we're going to duplicate, and then we're getting rid of these legs. We're getting rid of this leg. For sure. This one we might keep. Control X. Control Shift V. That just grabs whatever you what you want to separate, and then paste it right back down, just on a new layer. So, see, there's the leg. There's the rest of the drawing. This is so that I can do this. Mm. I'm just gonna escape. I want to try something else. Not sure where this knee is going. Yeah, this thing is a little short now. But I don't know. Let's just find out. I want chonky, chonky, chonky legs. Come on, we, we need more chunk. You don't want to fight with this lady. Alright. All of this is getting collapsed. This knee needs to come down. All this needs to come down. Yeah, I know it looks weird, super weird. That's fine. 
I don't really, I'm not going for normalcy here. I'm going for super dynamic. Also, if I'm doing this, then all this is going to move here. There we go. I think you could do the same thing, but a little bit easier with um, warp or something like that. There's the rev gauge. This makes it look like she's wearing jean shorts and she's not supposed to be doing that. That looks a little better. Let's go for a tail. I'm so bad at tail shapes. Um, that's too round. There we go. Uh, that tail looks like it belongs with the ear shapes and the hair shapes. If you can, you should try to repeat the same shapes a few times in your drawing because it makes it look like they're all part of the same design. Like you see this shape for the leg, sort of like those shapes for the ears. Um, so it wouldn't make sense if I made the hair look like, hold on, I'll give you an example. If I made the hair look like that, I don't think it would really make much sense with the rest of the design. Oh, the tail's on a new layer. Good. Because I don't like this. Or this. That's okay. This is fine. This might need to be even fatter, though. I don't know how I feel about this one piece of fluff right here, but I'm keeping it for now. Hmm. I don't know about that. It's 
an okay shape. Flip. There we go. We're starting to get some good shapes by accident, but we're getting them. Let's see if I can make this piece of hair longer and let's see if it works like that. Just a little bit longer. I think I do like the idea of this little piece of fluff coming off, but I want it closer to the body. There we go. So there's the rib cage. Um, now this is having a problem. I think this comes too off. It disrupts like this curve right here coming from right here. I'm going like this. I want to preserve that. And that, yeah. I always struggle for like what details to put on like I, like fashion, like what what kind of shirt? There's so many different cuts of shirt. I just can't choose, and I end up drawing the same shirt every time. And pants? What kind of pants? What kind of legs? Do I do a skirt? Do I do pants? Do I do jeans? Do I do pockets? Like I just don't. I don't know. It's overwhelming. Fucking heck. I want to see if I can do a really big thing on her hand. On her arm, that means. I don't know, maybe. I don't know what kind of... Yeah, let's collapse this. I think this might have to come down a little bit more even. If you're drawing ankles, the inner ankle is always higher than the outer ankle. I'm not being very technical right now, but I 
I'll show you what I mean. So here's somebody standing, right? Here's the toes. Inner ankle up here, lower ankle down there. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you see what I mean? Like this. Boom. And from the side view, the outside of the foot, totally flat by the way, because you can't see. It's just flat over here on this side. The um, the ankle on the outside comes on way, way, way down. And it's kind of more gentle, not as defined. <clears throat> and it's bigger. On, the, on this side, let's see. You can really see the arch. This is the inside. So the ankle would be somewhere up here, not down there. So I don't know why I'm drawing the toes because I'm looking for not that shape. I know all of my anatomy needs work. I'm not a super, super good at anatomy. So I apologize if it's making you wretch. Oh my god, this guy doesn't know about the blah 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 process on the knee. Yeah, I know. I'm an amateur. Let's see if this works. Makes the tail a little bit better. I don't know. I'm just throwing everything against the wall, seeing what sticks. Just trying to be kind of creative, I guess. No, I don't want that. I don't want that either. If anything, I want some strap to start over here and then come down low. Um, I don't like that.
that's not necessary. It breaks up the rhythm of the tail. A big whooshy shapes happening with the tail. I don't want to lose those. Yeah, that's better. I think it might be time to like start reining this in. I want this thumb to be bigger. There we go. I know she's not, she doesn't have the proper thumb position for a good fist, but that's okay. I'll allow it. See, I'm having, I'm leaving my brush. Um, I need to get rid of this crap. My brush is at an angle. See the way, all the way the hair is going, which just makes everything easier. If your hair is all going one way, do yourself a favor and let the brush do some of the work. So eyebrow is going to be like that, and then other one like this. Actually, I don't know if I like that. It's okay for now. I've gone far enough then I can start working on colors, I guess. Oh, I've been doing this for an hour. Actually, more than an hour because I paused a few times. <clears throat> this is about the time where I start putting things in groups. So this is going to be called sketch, just in case I make it clean line art eventually in the future. Lines I set to a color. Flats I usually set to green. And if you do that, you don't have to name. I 
So I want to turn down all smoothing, turn off pressure sensitivity, opacity, minimum diameter of 100%, honest circle. Sometimes I use an oval. Um, but for now, I'm just going to do this. Okay. So the eraser is going to be circle two. And I want to steal a color scheme that I like. So I'm looking through pictures real quick. Hmm, I don't know. I guess that's not bad. 686, yay. There we go. We'll steal this color scheme. scheme. Hair. Hair. Highlight. Um... Jacket, jacket, highlight with gray. Okay. Oh, it's spelling. I'm all right. Actually, let's grab the skin too. This is all going to be hair, so I'm going to color outside of the skin area. I'm not going to do clean line art. Not right now, at least. This is supposed to be just a di disposable practice picture, like practice recording myself. Sort of picture. And line art always slows me down a lot. That's a little better.
This is the part where I like to have an oval brush elongated. It really makes this part easier. Um, I, that's going to be a glove. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can do it. Still make it skin for now. But like this hand is obviously a lot bigger than the other hand. So it's definitely going to be at least a glove. If not a huge mechanical apparatus. But it's okay to flat it in as skin for now. shades so this is a trick sorry I didn't mean to bump you um, if you want to add shading to a layer but you don't want any of the shading to go outside the bounds um, you can make it a layer mask or I think it's um, that is what it is so I just hold down alt and aim in between the two layers and click left click just one time so now um, I don't even know the terminology, which one's the mask and which one is not the mask. Don't do that. That was an accident. All I know is this layer is being blocked by the layer underneath it. So nothing will escape the bounds of this layer. And it's taken me literally years to remember how how that shit works. What? I was doing on the wrong layer. Okay, so here's what I mean. So this is where I would do the shading. See what I mean? You can do this. Nothing will leave that layer.
I know, I didn't do finish the line art for the hair right there. It was finished at one point, and then I messed with it. I can always fix it or just not fix it. Either one. And I want to make, make this more angular so it's easier to paint. So this hair comes out all the way to here. And you want to avoid things like the thing I did up here with the hair, where it looks, or things are evenly spaced out, like right here, right here, and right here. It's pretty much a list of three pieces of hair. It should be varying the distance between things. But I'm not going to fix it. If I cared more about this picture, I would try to fix it. But I'm just so happy that the individual strands actually look kind of good. I'm not going to fix it. <laughs> All right. When you're doing flats, whenever, um, whenever you're going to do something later, like I'm going to do these ears later, it's a different color, you should bleed over into them. And don't ever define something like this edge right here or this edge unless you're not going to do flats over that. Oops, I forgot. The ears are going to be a different color. This hair needs to go like this. Okay. And the reason you want to do that is because when you have your flats, oops, you want to, you want everything to like, you don't want any gaps. Like, um, I don't know. You want everything to go right up to the edge to something else. Probably mess with the hair a little bit later. I'll show you what I mean. See this gap right here? You don't want that. Hair shades. And then alt left click right there. Um, I'm not going to do that right now though. This is going to be... The tail and ears. Tail. Uh, we'll do ears first. Right here. I'm going to change the background color. Um, I'll get rid of most of the there we go
There's one of you done. Oops, you didn't see that. It's always okay to like make a mistake with a brush and then erase it back. Unless you're doing some kind of, um, I don't know, you have a goal where you're not going to erase it all. Or it'll make it look bad if you do that. So it's okay to overshoot. Okay, there we go. I want, I want this to be a little bigger. There we go. This looks really bad. Actually, this should go here. That looks a lot better. I think I want to make all the lines darker. There's an easy way to do that, other than going over them over and over again. I'll show you real quick. Duplicate layer. And you can always change the opacity of that. So you just want a little darker, half opacity, a lot darker, full opacity, you can even do it again, but I'm not going to do that. You don't even have to flatten those. You can combine the layers if you want, control E. I think I'll do that. I'll just leave it like that. And go back to the ears and tail. I like to have um, my rotate canvas to be a really easy shortcut. Mine is R because rotate canvas is awesome. Same thing with flip canvas, horizontal. All the cool kids are doing it. Now I'm just going to erase. I think it would be kind of nice if you could see some of the tail peek through the be in between her thighs, but I don't know if it's worth changing the tail shape. See, since I'm using a, a slanty brush like this, this is what it looks like. Instead of like going back and forth and changing the brush shape a lot. If you want to get inside this little area here, just rotate your freaking canvas. Stay with a slanty brush. Slanty brushes are cool, man.
Oh, that's right. That zoom tool I'm doing, I just hit the Z key to open up the zoom. And um, if you click and drag left, it's zoom out. Click and drag right, it's zoom in. Left, left, right, left. I have no idea what color I want this to be. But you can always change that later. There's two ways, at least two. I think I need to adjust the skin a little bit. down some hair shades right now because I don't want to lose the whole color scheme up here as I start picking colors. I'm sorry, I'm going to go down to, there's the hair layer. What are you doing? Photoshop, I didn't ask for that. Hair shades. So I'm just going to lay down a few of them. I know everything's not done. I didn't even finish this part. Look, right there. See, I'm using the um, one of those as the mask, so I don't have to worry about going outside the bounds. Super nice. Highly recommend. Oops. Not what I meant to do. I didn't even finish the ears over here. I'm just getting distracted left and right. But yeah, it doesn't have to be good to, like right now. I just want to grab more colors. Uh, and once you have it once, you can always get it back by using the eyedropper tool. Eye. And then it'll grab that color. Boom, boom, boom. I like it at current and below layer because you're telling it See what I mean about the gaps that I was saying about? You don't want these gaps right here. Um, and I'm going to show you how I 
change the color. So I'm going to change this bra and panty line, I guess, or whatever it is that she's wearing. Um, and I'll do each one in a different way. So I just do Control U, which is my hue saturation menu. From here, you can change it to anything by adjusting all these. I want it to be a red, though. Um, just remember that if you bring, if you go to certain extremes, you won't be able to adjust the that thing anymore. So, like, let's say if I just make it pure black, I hit OK, and I do U again. Um, you see, the saturation slider isn't doing anything because it's not a color. There's no color to change the saturation to. It's completely grayscale, so that doesn't work anymore. So as long as you leave, um, you can't change hue anymore because it doesn't have hue. It's a gray. So as long as you um, keep a little color in there, you leave this menu open. So I bring the lightness down all the way there. Now I can change, go back to the hue menu again and put the lightness up some more and the saturation goes up and suddenly it's color again. And the other way I like to do this is lock transparency and then choose your color. So it's going to be this color. Just grab those colors and then just paint over it. All right, it's going to be that color. Um, where's the ears? So I'm going to make a new layer and then in between this new layer and the ears layer, hold alt left click and create the shading layer and go back and get the color for that. It was like this purple it's crazy talk. Um, and I'll grab the highlight too while I'm there. It looks like a light yellow or something. So here's ears shading. I'm going to flip the canvas. So I'm not the best cell shader, so, you know, don't take too many hints from me. I'm going to grab this color again and finish the ears. Over here is where I didn't do it. Flip. Okay, so there's that. Um, go back to my shading. I'm just going to knock this in real quick. The inside of the ear. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oops. 
Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Um, I can tell you guys are getting irritated about these eyes. So let's do the eyes. I do eye whites layer. Um, if I don't know what to do the eye whites as, uh, I usually go to yellow and a little bit, like just in the corner here, because you don't want your eyeballs to be perfectly white. In a lot of cases, they're really, really dark too. Um, so I don't want to talk a lot about what color to make your eye whites, because I don't know a lot, and I don't want to give you bad advice. But if you don't know what to do, Off-white is better than white. All right, now we do the eyes. Um, and I'm actually going to make a little mask here so that when I draw the eyes, hmm, I want them to be really striking. But I don't want to go outside the bounds of the eye whites. So now I gotta finish the suit. I'm gonna make another eye layer and make it dependent on the eye whites layer as well. Um, and then inside the eyes is gonna be a ring of green. And then purple-ish for the iris. So I'm not going to resolve this whole picture. I'm going to be done really soon, or at least call it done, because um, I need a break. But I'm going to do more on the suit. So we want to grab this color and then turn the lines back on. Oh, I actually want to dial down the lines a little bit so it gets easier to see. And go back to the suit layer. And then this is where all of this stuff is going to be colored. until I decide for sure and resolve all these this line art I could at least give you a hint of what it would look like so these ribbons or straps or whatever going across the tail are going to be called clothing it's kind of clothing right not exactly but you know I've been trying to dim down my saturation in my color schemes lately because um, my whole art career everything's been super super saturated really bright vivid colors and you just don't need that all the time um, but for this we're gonna have a lot of saturation really bright colors super like she's punky or energetic or strong or something yeah and you can do what I'm doing, which is add extra strands just just by drawing flats. You don't even have to have lines there. And if you're afraid of messing everything up, just do it on a new layer. So that's what I'm going to do. This needs to go this way. This needs to go this way. 
There we go. That's good. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I don't like it. But I kind of want one to go off like that. Actually, that's not good. Whatever. I'm going to fix all that later. This needs to be a glove, not a hand. And I still haven't resolved how this arm goes. Right? You can do that now with flats. So I don't know how accurate this is. Like I said, my anatomy is kind of wonky sometimes. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. This is all going to be clothing. I forgot to turn the spacing down. Sometimes if you if you leave the spacing at default, it was at 10. Look what happens when you draw. Um, so let's find some jagged edges. I don't know. It all kind of looks kind of like jagged pixels. It's easy to see if you have a lot of spacing. Like, let me show you. That's exactly what it's going to look like. If you, especially if you're drawing really, really fast, confident lines, you're going to end up with those jagged edges. You don't want that. So turn your spacing down to 1%. It's as low as it goes. I'm going to have a separate layer for the shoes just because, actually. I want to finish this first. This I don't want to be part of her clothing. There we go. I know it looks kind of lumpy. Not super proud of that. All of this might be redone if I ended up spending more time on this picture, which I may or may not do. One of these days, I'll be like one of those professional Japanese uh, illustrators where they can knock out like a masterpiece in like three and a half hours. All right now, this is not exactly a masterpiece but it, it is gone from start to finish in a reasonably short amount of time but that all comes with tons and tons and tons of practice and education confident lines which is the opposite of the lines I've been doing really help facilitate your speed and make it look better too there's really no downside the confident lines, it, they just take a lot more practice to make it look good.
but just like with real confidence, you can fake it till you make it. Like some people might say, like these pose and these proportions are kind of confident, even though the picture isn't. I don't know. I don't know, man. So now the shoes. I know you can kind of see toes here. You're not supposed to be able to, because they're not toes. This goes here. This goes here. Well, that's basically complete for now, except for this little bit of skin right here where I'm supposed to do more hair. So let's do that now. Go back to the ear shading. Yeah, where's the hair? There it is. Oops. Okay, now I gotta erase back some of the skin. There we go. Voila. Something I can clean up for free clicks. Yeah, that'll be the end of this video. I will let you guys know if I do more on this pick. Anyway, thanks. Make sure to smash that like button.